In this series, we are looking to artists in the Hugh Lane collection in order to inspire us with ideas of what to paint and draw around the house. In this video, we are looking at artists who paint objects or collections of objects, more commonly known as the genre still life. Before setting out to create your own still life, it is interesting to consider a number of decisions that the artists made when planning a still life, such as what kind of objects artists choose and how they decide to group them, also how they select the final composition of the painting. These decisions can strongly affect the tone or atmosphere of the work. To look into this a little more, I want to concentrate on two paintings in the Hugh Lane collection that show two quite different ways of approaching still life. This is a painting by Irish artist William Orpin called Reflections, China and Japan. In the painting, a collection of objects are grouped on a tabletop. In order to set up this painting, Orpin probably took some care selecting particular items for their association with East Asia. He arranged the objects very carefully in a harmonious group. The objects, except for the peacock feather, have shiny surfaces. The tabletop is also shiny and reflects the objects. He may have selected these particular items and put them on a reflective table to challenge and to demonstrate his ability as a painter, choosing notoriously difficult surfaces to paint. He topped this off by painting a feather, which is also very technically difficult. He uses very fine, smooth brush strokes to make the objects look very realistic. The tabletop horizon is about two-thirds from the top, and the white figure is placed off-center to the left. This gives the composition of the painting a balanced, harmonious feel. The colors are generally muted, with a pop of bright green and red. The overall feeling is one of calm and balance. Reflections, China Japan often hangs in the Hugh Lane Gallery not far from another painting of objects by a French painter called Edouard Vuillard. The painting is called La Cheminie, and it was painted in 1905. Orpin painted his reflections in 1902, so they are painted within three years of each other, but they have very different approaches and styles. La Cheminie is a combination of still life and an interior scene. It depicts flowers, some bottles, and some other items on a mantelpiece. The composition is unusual and slightly unbalanced. The corner of the mantelpiece comes right out of the painting towards the viewer, drawing her eye to the centre of the painting. The rest of the mantelpiece is cut off, as is part of the gold-framed painting and the clothes horse. They are, in effect, cropped. This suggests the painter was aware of photography and was allowing it to influence his work. Before the invention of photography, painters were more likely to arrange their compositions carefully within the picture frame, and not allowing parts of the scenes or objects to get chopped off. The artist seemed to derive a lot of pleasure from painting the wallpaper, and indeed he was known for his interest in pattern. The brush strokes are very fluid, with thick paint application. The idea here is to give a feel for the objects and the room, rather than an exact rendering. Vuillard was a member of a movement called Intimism, that involved the depiction of banal yet personal domestic scenes, particularly those within domestic interiors. Contemporary French art critic Camille Mauclair referred to Intimism as the intimate meaning of the spectacle of life. This chimes with something which has been a concern of artists all through 20th and 21st century art, the sublime in the quotidian, or the beauty of everyday life. This is the idea that we are surrounded by beauty or a visual interest in our everyday domestic lives. We just have to take time to notice it. Let's look at the two paintings together again so you can consider which approach you might prefer. In the Orpin painting, the objects were chosen carefully for their aesthetic qualities and possibly personal reasons. The artist then arranged them centrally in the frame of the painting in a balanced way. The effect is calm and harmonious. In the Vuillard painting, the artist looked around his room and selected a view that he thought expressed certain ideas about the pleasure of examining and noticing the ordinary or the everyday in your surroundings. He then went about painting it in a rich and textured way, more interested in the atmosphere than accuracy. When you are starting your still life, consider first, which is more you? Are you more Orpin or Vuillard or a combination? In order to start your own still life, you will first need a viewfinder. This will help you decide what to draw and how to frame it on the paper or canvas. To do this, you will need an A4 sheet of paper, a pencil, a ruler, and a craft knife or scissors. Put the A4 sheet on a table. And using a ruler, draw a line connecting opposite corners like this. Make a rectangle about this size by using the cross lines as a guide. Cut the rectangle out using a craft knife or a scissors. Now the cutout frame has the same dimensions as the A4 sheet. Look through the viewfinder around your home and select something to draw. 
Imagine that the frame of your viewfinder is the same as the edges of your paper or canvas. If you hold it further away from your face, you will see less, and if you hold it slightly closer, you will see more. This is a good way to decide what you will and will not include in your painting or drawing. Try it landscape format and portrait format. In this case, we use an A4 viewfinder to start, so any paper or canvas will have to be in the same format, though not the same size. If you decide you would like to take a more formal approach, more like the William Orphan's reflections, start by thinking about what objects you would like to select. It is a good idea to include natural forms because strangely they are easier to draw than very regular shapes. Then use your viewfinder to trace at least three small rectangles on a second piece of paper like this. Look at your objects through the viewfinder and make some compositional decisions. Make a quick sketch in your scrap paper of the three kinds of composition. Take a look at which one you like best. Use your selected composition as a guide when you are starting your work. Whichever composition you choose, start your drawing or painting by selecting the largest or most central object. Draw that and then draw everything else in relation to that. If you have a group of objects on a table, for example, make sure to start with an object and then the rest of the objects and draw the table afterwards. 